Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone, that is Joe Bryan, and hey, you're watching us live on Twitch. We're back on Twitch this week because Twitch works. Yay! <laughs> yeah, we had to use the YouTubes last week. <laughs> we did. It's always it's important to have a backup, and if YouTube went down, I was prepared to try to stream using Odyssey, and I don't know how that was going to work, but you know what? I'm brave enough to try these things. <laughs> exciting week and you know today just happened to be the day that arc launched so you know i spent yeah. most of my morning trying to ingest like okay and it's all gaming and it's all gaming this is i know i'm getting old I'm like i don't care about the games tell me about the media encodings so we're just gonna have to wait on that but it seems like definitely a mixed bag a lot of talk about that but jill what have you been up to you're back from your holiday you went to like disneyland 11 yeah. times right Went to, went to Disneyland a, a few days. You know, we go every month, so it's our staycation because because uh, we were we are pass holders, which is wonderful. But the reason we do staycation is because my husband works so often that we don't have time to go on a long you know week trip somewhere. And so it was. It was the only thing that was sad is that he was supposed to have a four day weekend, and he only got three. He got called into work. <laughs> So that was sad to have one day without him. But the oh, three days. Steve could have been like, no, I can't make it in. Why? I'm on the teacups. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> but we made the, made the most of it. And we did some things at Disneyland that Steve had never done. And that was really cool. I got him on uh, Walt's, uh, the original uh, fire truck that Walt drove on uh, Disneyland. That was his Walt's uh favorite vehicle and so we got to ride in that and that that was very exciting <laughs> right on right on glad you guys had a good time <laughs> glad steve got some time off that's always yeah. good to hear mm -hmm. i've been doing a bunch of stuff bunch of stuff arc is arc i've been following that all morning and uh it does seem kind of a catch on my end i'm like 350 dollars like oh do i do just buy one and i'm like hey i checked before we went live like oh right next week we can buy them on the 12th yeah, yeah. Well, Linus Tech Tips, I know, said the, the 750 they thought was the uh, best buy because it was, uh, you know, inexpensive and it had the performance of an RX, AMD RX 6600 and close to the GTX uh, 3060. So that was for the price. It was good. So the moral of the story is, yeah, you <laughs> want to buy the 770 Founders Edition. Yeah. It's $350 because it's got 16, <laughs> 16 gigs. 16 gigs. Yeah. yeah. But it, it was limited. It's limited. That's it's <laughs> not. That's Intel had to come out and explain to everyone. They're like, <laughs> the limited edition means nothing. That is what they're calling their founder's edition. So uh, there's yeah, no yeah, yeah. rarity whatsoever to the limited edition, according directly it's just from the founder's Intel. founder's edition. Yeah. Okay. Instead of founder's <laughs> edition, Intel's decided to call it limited edition. And as you can tell, this caused zero confusion whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> it did. <laughs> the 770 at 350, I'm like, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see. I'll probably break down and just buy one, but it does, you're going to need resizable bar in mm -hmm. order to make these things even in contention kind of sort of maybe matching performance with a 3060 yeah we'll have to see we'll have to see i don't have any the only system i have with the resizable bar is uh the jackbox is running the 5600g and like uh that doesn't have a discrete gpu and it doesn't need it um i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know I'm, I'm just i want to play around with the ev1 encoding it's pretty much that on top of that man uh <laughs> i talked about it Maybe last week, week before last, I, I got a Tascam 1608 audio interface, and it just does a bunch of cool stuff that I am finally got a chance this week to sit down and play with it. Nice GUI mixer with EQ, compression, just all built right into it. And what excites me about it is the usability of the GUI that's been created for the onboard DSP and everything like that, because people were not going to recoil from it. Like, oh yeah, I know how to use an EQ. I know how to set up a compression. And this is brilliant. It's available from Linux, right on Linux, and pretty easy to build, pretty easy to set up. Works out of the box. It's USB. So stay tuned for that. Next couple of weeks, I'm going to be playing with that. On top of everything else, I'm finally getting around to migrating the Linux Gamecast website off of HostGator. Mm hmm. Wow. It's been there for ages. <laughs> it has been on HostGator since HostGator used to be a new upstart cool company. Yeah. 
And I don't know. I mean, I've had my ups and downs ones with HostGator, and we don't have a cheap package. I, I write HostGator a check every month, too. Mm. Um, we also have 600 gigabytes of warm storage. Yeah. So this is, this is not an oh, easy boy. thing to move around, and um, which is basically past couple of, uh, I'm probably saying like six to eight months. I know everybody's got a horror story for every, you know, hosting VPS provider or anything like that. But I don't know what has happened recently. And it's not so much that the downtime you at home probably don't even notice. Because I also write Cloudflare a check every month. And our site is replicated through, they have a WordPress thing that keeps like edge caches of the site. So normally you wouldn't even notice it being down. And I don't even notice it, to be honest with you. Until I try to mm. log in and do stuff. And when I do that, mm. I'm like, what? What's going on? My problem with HostGator, and it should be with any service provider you ever deal with, is if you have a problem, tell people, hey, we're having a problem. This is what's going on. This is how we're just radio silence this entire time, not even acknowledging anything. So I've been slowly moving stuff over to another provider, and um, I might be able to flip the switch on it this weekend. Because, you know, the best time to do it is on a Friday afternoon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your time, your your time available during the week before you play Trackmania. <laughs> I, I just want yeah, deal with I'll deal with all the problems on Monday. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no, that, that's been a uh, something I've been working on for a while. Just to, uh, that, it's sad when you've been with a company for so long and you've watched them like just yeah. go. Oh. They got bought out by, you know, Big Corpo. Yeah. A couple of years mm -hmm. ago, and it's just went from like, oh man, that's a shame. Anyway, Jill, Curl yeah. six point is out and uh we were talking sure in the pre show. <laughs> it's always like the weird tweets. It's the weird tweets. Six got released. I had downloaded it and compiled it, and it was like one o'clock in the morning, whatever. But I was in here working on some stuff. And I just posted a little screenshot. Little screenshot. I'm like, hey, look, it works, and here's a link to um the Linux kernel mailing list or might have been kernel name wherever I post it, LWN. And I come back and check the next morning. It's got like almost 300 like likes on I'm like, you people are weird, man. Like, really? People mm -hmm. were really excited about it, Joe. Yeah. Well, I think it is exciting. Yeah, and it's a new number too. So yes, on Sunday, Linus Torvalds. He officially announced the release of Linux kernel 6.0, and he stated, as is hopefully clear to everybody, the major version number change is more about me running out of fingers and toes than it is about any big fundamental changes. But of course, there's a lot of various changes in 6.0. We've got over 15,000 non-merge commits in there in total, after all, and as such, 6.0 is one of the Bigger releases, at least in numbers of commits in a while. Yeah, uh, <laughs> too many commits for fingers and toes also <laughs> as well. <laughs> but this this version has so many, uh, so much uh, more hardware support. And of course, the range of uh, bug fixes and performance improvements, including performance improvements for Intel, Xeon's Ice Lake, AMD Ryzen Threadripper, and AMD EPIC processors, thanks to scheduler changes and other kernel energy tweaks. Ven will be happy about that when he gets his new AMD EPIC. <laughs> and uh, lots of new hardware support, including support for Intel's fourth generation Xeon server chips, Sapphire Rapids, and their 13th generation Raptor Lake core chips and support for AMD, which provides a kernel graphics driver for their RDNA 3 GPU, and both the OpenRISC and LongArch architectures gain support for PCI buses, and RISC-V, this is important, RISC-V also ships with the new default configuration capable of running Docker. Docker. <laughs> Very important, we need Docker in the Linux community to work. And the ARM-based Lenovo ThinkPad X13S laptop, which runs on the Qualcomm, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3, is actually now supported. And uh, that was a very important support there. 
And there's also support for the EXT4 file system to fet and fetch and set UUIDs stored in a file system super block. So if you would like to see all the, ma ma all the changes, then there is a lot more major changes in this kernel. Despite what Linus says, <laughs> there's a lot of updates and changes in this kernel. Go read uh, through the show notes for the links. A couple of things I'm excited about, actually, legitimately. Mm -hmm. A couple of things, as in two. Dose. Yeah. I was looking forward to. Now, we're talking about zero copy network transmission. Yes, that could be handy in my particular situation in the studio. Nice. And buffered writes to XFS. That's a file system because it's mm -hmm. one I use because I'm writing big honking chunks of streaming data every time. I posted a screenshot of what I like to call Linux Emcast IKEA edition of all the bits and bobs and recorded in the chunks. It's about 300 gigs for an episode before you take all the bits and you transcode them out. Even this show right now is being written. I don't know, probably about 90 megabytes a second right now for the recording. Yeah. XFS, happy to see that. Now, I got it, downloaded it. I built it on Jackbox, and I'm thinking, what about the RT patch set? Because they've been working on pulling in some of the RT patch set, and it turns out there was a little hiccup with like the last little bit, so cleaned it, got the RT patch set, patched it, rebuilt it, Full hard RT, up and working. No problems, no complaints. Then I got a brave. Then I got brave yesterday, or the day before, it might have been the day before yesterday. Time's weird these days. I decided to build 6.0, just out of curiosity, on Jackbox, because um, mm -hmm. I wanted to see. Not not on Jackbox, on Threadbooper. Because I wanted to see, man. I, I wanted to see, uh, is it going to work with the NVIDIA drivers? And is it going to build with Blackmagic? Turns out the latest... NVIDIA drivers, not from, as we learned, Pop OS or uh, Ubuntu or whoever. You probably already got them in Arch, though. Is, yeah. uh mm -hmm. up and running. Just use the run file, installed, kernel module, good to go. More surprisingly was the Blackmagic modules, which I have a gang of Blackmagic hardware that requires evil proprietary binary blobs that will, yeah. you know, still <laughs> children or something to um, use with a capture card. They all work too. I had Wonderful. zero, mm -hmm. zero, Jill, none, none. I had no faith <laughs> that those were going to build. I was like, well, you know what? We'll, we'll just have to see, right? We'll just have to see. And wow, um, <laughs> that's amazing though. Linux has come so far. <laughs> now you can install a new kernel and things just working out of the box. Woohoo. Who'd have thought? Well, you know what? <laughs> I, here's the thing, Jill. <laughs> the only, the main reason that I ended up compiling 6.0 and putting it on Threadweaver, you know, I was curious though. Like, eh, maybe we're going to use it, maybe we're not. Because I had to answer a question. I wasn't going to bother with it because I like stable. But somebody ah, asked, yes. <laughs> asked on Twitter, they're like, hey man, can it run Crisis? So I, I okay, here's <laughs> what I'm telling you. Yeah, I went through all of this trouble just to compile a kernel so I could do this. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is girl 6.0. This is the type of human being nice. I am. Um, so <laughs> there is that proof. Colonel mm -hmm. 6.0 can, in fact, run Crisis. You don't have to worry about it. Now, Yeah. <laughs> this was all done on Debian, as you might have just saw from a screenshot. I'm running a Debian Bookworm right now, which is Debian yeah. testing. <laughs> I put that on both of the boxes because it was getting to the time. There comes a time when you're running Debian stable where you have to start looking ahead and you typically switch over to testing, you know, 12, 13 months out, just to kind of keep abreast, like what type of curveballs? And I normally do it on these two boxes over here. Decided not to do it that way this time. Got it on Jackbox, got it on Threadbooper. And one thing that has been in contention up for a vote recently is what are they going to do about closed source firmware because it is 2022 and we're heading into 2023. Mm. It's just an evil fact of life. You need firmware to boot devices, Wi-Fi chipsets. That's a big one. GPUs, things like that. Not working well enough out of the box to get an operating system installed. And Debian's run into that because they have a very strong line in the sand about not including non-free firmware. Now, there was always, not always, 
effectively always has been the unofficial version of Debian, which was from Debian, but it yeah. was kind of spooky. You're like, I don't want to install this unofficial whatever. And they wanted to clarify that. So they held a vote about what to do about non-free firmware. And votes were cast. They ended up choosing option five, which mm -hmm. I thought was kind of kind of interesting. Um, you know, the change SC for non-free firmware and installer, one installer. What does that mean? It means that the upcoming installers are going to have an option just to install non-free firmware. <sighs> yes. Yay. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, this is great news. And this is actually the option that I wanted for, for Debian uh, 12, Bookworm, and it, for the future. Because in, including non-free in the installer is just easy peasy for beginners and advanced users alike as well as the option that many other distros use in their installers like Ubuntu. I mean, it just, it's, it's the easy answer. <laughs> it really it is, is, but it's also a sad day for my brothers and sisters who are true open source advocates. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> like, oh, they had to find a way to handle this. Yeah. And they it's did. just they the cruel, cruel reality. Modern hardware needs firmware to load. Yeah. And, you know, you want things like your GPUs and network cards working out of the box. So, yeah. Another thing to come out uh, with Debian 12, Brave New World, right? Yeah. Is this they're going to be exciting. including, not just inclusion, because I, I know as soon as I say this, you're like, but then you can already get pipe wire in Debian 11. It's going to be the default in Debian 12. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. that is the newest version of pipe wire. Yeah. I know they'd been uh, testing it on SID. So this is really great to hear that it moved over to stable. Um, yeah, I mean, Pipewire has been available in Debian for quite some time. Yeah, but it was an older version. And, um, well, I mean, it's Debian stable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was whatever version it yes. was when they are like, <laughs> okay, <years> ago. locked. <laughs> so it's good to see this. Um, yeah, if you're running Debian testing right now, you're going to get the latest and greatest if you want that. But, you know, being default is kind of the big thing, you know, shipping default. You know, you're not going to have pipe wire out of the box. You're going to have pipe wire out of the box. You're not going to have pulse audio out of the box. And that's, yeah. that's going to change things up. It's going to change the ecosystem. Definitely. Yeah. That's probably May when Ben's going to change. Interesting times. Oh, yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> He's not. Yeah. Not all the pipe, bits are working for pipe wire on pipe, pipe wire yet for, for ben. people who can't figure out how to use Jack, Joe. <laughs> yes. I guess that's true. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be brutal about it, um, yeah. <laughs> it has all the functionality that we've had for the last two decades with the Jack. Yeah. So um, true. No, I have <laughs> nothing but love and respect for the Pipewire project. And I look forward. It's still very much a work in progress. That's the way I don't play around with it too much. Yeah. It's a moving target, which is good. It's under heavy development. But, you know, we're talking like Debian 12. So, you know, 16, 17 years from now when Debian 12 comes out, hey, Maybe we'll be ready. Now, <laughs> this, no one expected. This is kind of dropped. Yes. Um, I got it. I think Jill beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, yesterday um, morning when I woke up, I read this. <laughs> it turns out because I was checking my email and I got a buddy that works at Calabra. Yes. <laughs> and I, I should say the show does. And we get like, hey. This cool thing we just mm -hmm. did. Maybe you want to talk about it. I was like, okay, let me go to show notes. And Jill, you already had it in the notes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, this is wonderful news and something as Linux users have been waiting for a very long time. Better open source support for our NVIDIA GPUs on Linux. So there is a new Vulkan graphics driver for NVIDIA hardware called NVK, which will be implemented in the Mesa open source graphics, graphics stack. This will re re replace the NVIDIA Nouveau stack. And thanks to some of the great devs at Collabora and Red Hat for scratch building this new reference Vulkan driver for NVIDIA. And currently it supports NVIDIA Turing and later architectures, but support for Kepler, Maxwell, and Pascal Pascal NVIDIA GPU architectures is coming very soon. 
And it will just be so nice to have NVIDIA open source graphics drivers finally as good as AMD and Intel's. <laughs> I've been waiting for this day. It would be nice to be able to game and uh, do encoding with the open source drivers without having to use the proprietary. But completely that may not all happen, but at least it looks like we're going to be able to play games a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say games because as soon as you get into the encoding and stuff, you're like, oh, you yeah. can install the binary drivers. It's binary blobs. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> this is kind of one of the real things, man. Let's talk about Nuvo. Um, it's been around for a long time. What do you, uh, if you might have run into it, and I know anybody who's been dealing with NVIDIA on Linux for the past two decades, I think uh, uh, Linus, mm -hmm. um, you know, the squeaky one, not this one. <laughs> Linus Tech Tips. He was like, should we, you know, when they were talking, he's like, should we use the open source drivers for NVIDIA or the closed source? I'm like, that's not even a question. Why, why, why are you, why is you, no, you never, here's what you expect from Nuvo drivers. Hopefully, if you get lucky, a GUI to install with. That's really oh, all you expect. You yeah. expect it to like maybe kind of work well enough to maybe <laughs> click a next button a few times just to save you from doing that text install. And that's if you were lucky, because, you know, they're the reverse engineered drivers, mm -hmm. and it's amazing that they were good enough for that. You know, and for older stuff, they kind of work, but they're missing things like power control and stuff like that. The landscape, it's really changed in the last few years. They kind of go over this on the uh, Calabra blog. They really do. Uh, you know, with the introduction of the GSP firmware, open source kernel drivers from a couple of months ago, and NVIDIA did that dump with all the headers for the 3D compute stuff. That's all. It's not documentation, but it's a lot of new breadcrumbs, and which has led to this. So, like, hey, you know, we can start sticking this stuff together, and it's kind of an ideal time to just reboot the Nuvo driver stack because, yeah. not to knock it, but we can probably can do a lot better. And it's really early days with this. Really, really early days. Like, yeah, NVK. Where's it at right now? Let me tell you where it's at. Don't bother reporting bugs. That's where it's at right now. <laughs> and if you worked with any other project and like, like got it i understand very very heavy development now progress has been pretty good with this uh they say they're about 20 percent of the way there if you squint a little bit yeah. and mm -hmm. if you want to play with it at home if you want to contribute to it you can do that you can pull the main branch in vk uh from nuvo mesa project build it give it a try you might be wondering you know talking a lot about vulcan in gaming and all that what about OpenGL? They kind of get two options with that. They can do a rewrite of Gallium, mm -hmm. which turns out is not as daunting as it sounds. But what I hope they do, just for the neat factor, and like, oh, cool, is to use Zinc yeah. for OpenGL, which is the wrapper for OpenGL using Vulcan. Yeah. Weird times. Exciting times. This is, um, yeah, out of nowhere. <laughs> like you were saying, Ben, I was just, I was amazed when I woke up this morning and read the article. I'm like, whoa. Uh, that's, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting to think like five years from now, you can just pop in like your NVIDIA card, like your AMD card and everything's going to go great. Mm -hmm. Strange. <laughs> it's strange. Cause like step one's always been like, maybe I can just get to a TTY so I can install my run file. Yeah. Get binary drivers up and running. <laughs> Having a legitimate, uh, to what Joe was saying, open source option you know something that you can play the games on and you know just a good first desktop experience right yeah absolutely absolutely and that's one of the reasons why amd you know, gpus are are so loved by the community they just work games just work everything just works <laughs> so and intel intel too and now we have intel arc <laughs> so it's and about people time started saying that about two years ago yeah said, let's not forget the tried and true dumpster fire Oh yeah, of ATI it, and AMD. Yeah, it Linux took them support. a long time. It took time. them open source uh, and let the community do it. Yeah, absolutely. I remember. And they were that smart ATI. to do that. They were smart they to do that. They didn't have an option. Yeah, and they weren't doing it quick enough. <laughs> they were about to go under. Like uh -huh. Ryzen was a hail mary pass for AMD. They had already sold their headquarters and leased it back to themselves just to get the cash. To success. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, not, not to get back on the GPUs, we still got that um, AMD announcement for the RDNA 3. Yeah, which I'm really excited about. So come <laughs> to think of it, next week I'm not going to buy my ARC. 
Oh, I'm wait. okay. You're not going to buy it until ARC yet? <laughs> I'm not going to buy the ARC yet. I'm going to let AMD come out. And let's see what AMD has. Because I said it time and time again, in code, in compute, that's why I have Team Green. You know, that's yeah. why I've chosen this particular Solus Corporation over this other particular Solus Corporation. Mm-hmm. And um, I would like to be able to maybe move over to Solus Corporation 2 or Solus Corporation 3. Yeah. Just to have options in my Solus Corporation <laughs> buying <Yes>. experience. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it sounds, I think it sounds better when you say Solus Corporation instead of team. Yeah. <laughs> Team red, team blue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Team green. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I did a thing. It's finally out. It's been out for patrons for a little bit of time. I like to give them, uh, you know, just more early access about things. And it's about these guys. These guys over here, you see the little wheel for the audio oh, listeners. Oh. I have something that everyone thinks is a mixer because they see the faders on it. And I'm like, oh, that's a mixer. No audio goes through this whatsoever. It's incapable of processing audio. Same goes for the guy over here with a wheel on it, but it does have fader knobs and all that. These are MIDI control surfaces. That's all the information that carries MIDI control. So I can translate movement from my hands into the DAW that's running over here, which is kind of handy and I kind of need it. And I decided to make a just definitive guide about how to get this up and running because there's two different types of control surfaces. There's a Mackie control surface and of course there's MIDI CC control surfaces and how to use them with Jack. I understand that you can use them with Ulsa. I also stand, understand there's about 13 people on this planet I trust mm-hmm. to interface directly with Ulsa and neither of them or any of them work for Re- with Reaper or with Audor. So I said, no, we're going to use Jack. And that's what I walk you through. And, you know, you get to think of a uh, a control surface is like a pointing device, a mouse on methamphetamine. I mean, it's crazy what you can do. You can do the volumes, you got mute, fade, drop markers, activate plugins, all while zooming around on the timeline. And you do have those two types of control surfaces that I can show here in the video. That's one on the left, and that is the X-Touch 1, reasonably priced. X-Touch Compact before the end times happened was also reasonably priced, not so much anymore. But we go through Getting it set up. Our door is nice and quick, nice and simple. One main reason I did this because Reaper, because I kid you not, Joe Ryan, in order yeah. to get this up and running on Reaper with install- MIDI CC, you yeah. got to install a plugin I to install that. a plugin. I know. I was, I was really amazed by that. That's Reaper. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> well, most people don't know what to expect from Reaper because it's poorly, <laughs> criminally, <laughs> detrimentally not covered by people who because you got your like linux audio crowd but there's a strong like um like floss things like we only use open source stuff for audio production i'm like that's nice some people need to get work done though yeah (laughs) (laughs) you know not to take anything away from what you're doing and the thing about reaper is is the knowledge base it doesn't matter if it's the best project it's the better project because of the knowledge base you know, it wins the popularity t- contest, which is not necessarily the best thing. But if you search for something and you put Reaper after it, you're going to find an answer. Yeah. Of the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who used Reaper, and there's going to be conversations. You do that and you type in Adore, it's going to take you to the Adore form. And a lot of times you'll get like four posts in and like, you need to ask this question in an IRC. You're like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Not knocking on door at all. You type in Bitfig for that reason, probably get something mm-hmm. very similar. So Reaper is popular. A lot of people coming from Windows are familiar with Reaper. That's just what they use. So I wanted to make sure all that information is there. In fact, we use Reaper. Why? Because mm-hmm. it works better for live production. It does. <laughs> um, so yeah, all that's there over at Linux Gamecast. I'll walk you through it. If you get any questions, leave them on the YouTube video if you want. If you want direct line tech support, you can do that as well by becoming a patron. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's going to get you into our super, super, super hyper secret. We can't tell them about it. That's called Discord. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Where we yeah. hang out um, yeah. the other six days <laughs> of the week. And and they're cutting up, doing our thing, because uh, I've always made it a point. I, I've always like, you join other shows, and I do the same thing, like... 
you know, people who are doing presenters or YouTube stuff, like they're never in their chat. We're always in our chat because we don't uh, have a separate Slack. We don't have a matrix. This this is where everything takes place 24-7. It goes into our main general just yeah. reason. However, we're not trying to milk you for money. We got a thing that ties our IRC, our Twitch chat, and Discord, all live chat, free of charge. Boom, right there. That's what you're seeing. Nobody's typing right now. They put them all to sleep, Jill. Uh, oh, my Steve husband is typing, but he's <laughs> he's always typing like 90% of the time. <laughs> he's thinking about it. He's thinking of it. It takes him a while on his phone. And he's got a new phone. He's learning how to use. <laughs> With the 5Gs. Or he's at work. <laughs> but I do want to thank a recent patron, DSN Joe, who joined us last night for Track Mania. Yeah, That's something you can also do. awesome. He has increased his pledge, which was yeah. fantastic. He's I a sea monster now. <laughs> racing around. And um, like, I, I like that. You know, we have like adult community night on Tuesdays and Fridays with our track media. And yeah. somebody's joining in and like, hmm, especially when they're new to it. I'm like, all right, I get this. I get this. And they take a break and they come back like, oh, okay, I get this. We got to do this. I, I want to perform on Friday and always try to do some fun stuff on Friday. So it'll be good hanging out with everybody there but a bunch of bonus things we got over a patron trying to sweeten the deal if you can help us out we very much appreciate it also we got amazon wish list over at linuxgamecast.com i got a mm -hmm. studio wish list jill's got one for her studio i got mm -hmm. it's not even a wish list just an equipment guide all on amazon i'm not telling you to buy anything on amazon you can buy it on well i used to be able to say new i got no better on amazon these days buy it somewhere but somebody picked up a little bit of kit from our Amazon wish list for the studio. Yeah. And I'm holding it in my hand right now. Yeah. Who who got you that, Ben? It's Unoid. Yay, Unoid. <laughs> that is Unoid. Um, Thank you so much, Unoid. <laughs> this is a two terabyte 970 Evo Plus. And I got to respect Unoid because it all led from our equipment. You know, you know, it was looking for some audio stuff. And I'm like, hey, man, just use this. Like, I didn't even know you had that. That's why I brought it up last week. Like, by the way, we got all this. Then I get a message in Discord later on. I was like, so maybe you want the PCI Express 4 version of that drive. I'm like, no, just the three. I'm just talking, like, whatever, doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, fine. Here, take it. So there it is. Thank you very much. Uh, I've Yay. even named it. So now we have Steamy, Crunch, Backup, okay. and this one is called, what is it called, Joe? I don't remember. <laughs> no, I never told you. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> this drive no, you is, never told me. <laughs> is now known as Dump. Ah, okay. So, thank you for the Dump. You know it. <laughs> thank LGC you for cares. the Dump. <laughs> that All was right. good. <laughs> that's enough shameless self-promotion. Let's uh, slice into a hundred. Can you imagine eating a... Uh, an HDD. Oh, Lord. Yeah, you just cut it with a knife and high knife. Yeah, it would, it would takes a little magnets. bit more than a knife. Yes. <laughs> a one, look at that, a one terabyte drive. I, oh. Doesn't that seem so small? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it is uh, it's drive size. Like, what I even think about this, like two terabyte, I'm like, to me, this is unfathomable amounts of data. Yeah. But in reality, it's not. Like intellectually, I, immediately I drop this in. I'm like, well, that's three quarters of the way full. Um, you know, in a world where you can reasonably buy like an eight, ter eight terabyte SSD for, you know, five, six hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. But you're that's missing out. You're missing out with these new drives, kids. <laughs> yes. You're not, you're not getting the uh, experience that a lot of us grew up with. So this true. tiny dongle is here to bring back the battle times because this is <laughs> the HDD <laughs> clicker. It's using an ATT tiny microcontroller to really, you know, help remind you of the battle days of PCs making noise when you touch them. Now, basically, this operates pretty simply. If the uh, hard drive light lights up the LED, you know, sending the signal, this thing starts screeching for you. It starts making noise. Yeah, and nice. um, let's give it a listen. You want to give it a listen now? Yes, absolutely. All right, I want to hear what that thing sound. Sounds like. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, no, I don't want to bore anybody. Here's defragging in DOS. <laughs> uh, 
ASMR, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's as, as cool as a floppy disk being read oh. or, <laughs> or write, written. <laughs> you know, it's made even sweeter knowing that he's defragging an SSD. Like, yeah. don't do that. I mean, it's yeah. not really going to hurt it, but it's wholly unnecessary. <laughs> and I think it's, you know, you've listened to it. I'm like, Almost sounds right, but I think the problem is, I think the problem is it would probably sound like 98% right if it was inside the case. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't true. quite it be needs that sharp. metallic. Right. Yeah. Kind of get that, you know, got to bring out the <laughs> resonance that you would only get um, from your PC case and an old steel case. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, yeah. we're, we're like vinyl records, man. It's like, oh, no, no, no. It's going to be desktop. It can't be a tower. Tower doesn't have the same um, resonance or you, know, you can't get the right experience. Now, I got to think it though. These things are like only 25 bucks. I'm like, that's an excellent gag gift. You're like, what do you mean gag gift? I'm like, you hide it in your friend's PC. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's great. I think that's perfect. And, um, you know, I, this, this is such a, a, a fun and wonderful project. And my only concerns is if, you know, you, you, you don't really want to hear the click of death, <laughs> of course, with, <laughs> with your new drive, your SD. <laughs> drive you wouldn't want to hear the click of death but normally you know they just die so i guess i guess if if one's dying when you're you're <laughs> you're uh you know running this it just stops ssds <laughs> have that advantage though because you would feel very guilty especially because an hdd <laughs> especially back in the day they, they'd let you know they'd let yeah. you know you sometimes Absolutely. would have months before it would go completely dead. Yeah. And that entire time you're thinking, man, I really should move the data off that drive. It's probably going to die pretty. Then it would die yeah. and you would go, why did I never move the data off that drive? I've known about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And it finally died and you couldn't go, le shock. You're like, that's 100% yeah. on me. Aw. And you then you get... had to go put it in the freezer and see if you can get your data off it, which sometimes you could. So I just wouldn't restore it back up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, <laughs> SSDs and NVMEs completely alleviate you from that responsibility because as Jill said, they just die. You're like, oh, yeah. it doesn't work now. And it's usually the controller, not the flash memory that wears up. But after seeing this, I was thinking, okay, we need a couple of other versions. One, I want a version of this that simulates that yeah. of a 15 k SCSI drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you can't make that human noise. It's extra sharp. Like you can just hear it. Yeah. It's like, okay, when I pull the power from that, it's going to take two minutes to spool down. I'm looking <laughs> at you, ultra wide SCSI two Barracudas. Yeah. What about even, even louder? My, my, Micropolis and Seagate full height SCSI drives. When they make that click, not only does the computer shake, but it moves. <laughs> Clunk. <laughs> In my deck alpha, that's what happens. I got regular drives in my deck alpha. <laughs> no, I, I've actually got the original full height drives <laughs> that uh, uh, deck used <laughs> in there. I also have some newer uh, SCSI drives in there, too. <laughs> I haven't had a modern HDD in about a decade. I yeah. could tell you the last time I bought one. I was thinking about it, and I think... You know, they're probably not loud these days. They're probably like super quiet. You can barely hear them. You got to like mm, hold them up to your ear to yeah, hear the. Yeah, uh, they're much but wider. <laughs> then I was still thinking, I was like, what, what's another way to make noise? What's another blast from the past that kids don't get to experience? And I thought about it. Let's do yet another device that brings back that whoosh of 30x CD ROM drives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's That's another one. You remember those things powered up? We're not talking like 4X. We're not even talking 8X, maybe some 16X. By the time we got to like 24X, 30X, 40X, 50X, they turned into dust busters. Yeah, and Legitimately, they sure did. you would spool up a CD. You would hear it from the other room. It would yep. and things would start shaking. You're like, oh man, I hope that yeah. doesn't come apart. That's another and if one. If you've ever seen a CD ROM come apart at 50X, it is catastrophic. Mm -hmm. There's YouTube videos of that. Go, oh, go yeah. take a look at them. Oh, yeah. So, and then there's also a zip disk. We could get the click of death from the <laughs> zip disks. There you go. You can just, you, we, we just need just like an entire um, or my, board. My, <laughs> oh, my 
gosh. On my side quest drives. <laughs> Sky's the limit. You got a speaker yeah. in there. So we, we need different uh we need different samples. Yeah. For different things. Well, another thing, Ven, I actually like about this project is something that I do because you don't hear the sound of uh, modern SD and M MVMEs is I'm constantly, I, I just, out of habit, I just check my, um, you know, HDD LED light on, on the case. I've been doing that since I've, I've gotten these quiet drives. And I think that's, that's part of the reason why is because I'm not hearing the click and I like to see a representation of the hard drive working. I just and this open is HTOP. perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, you can do that too. <laughs> but I like looking at the light too. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, mine's plugged in. Give me credit there. At least I plugged it in. Most of the times, I don't even bother plugging that in. Like, I don't want like, any lights or what, but I plugged yeah. it in on this build. So yeah, there you go. There you go. Make noise. And again, it'll be a great present for your parents when you're home for the holidays. Put it in their uh, machines. Don't tell them about it. And just tell them it's normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't do that. I will deny recommending it to you. All right, everyone. We got to get out of here. We're running <laughs> over time. But before <laughs> we do, let's roll some credits. Here's our credits. Oh, I see. Yeah, we have FX Boy in the house right now in chat, and Inertia, and our Theron, and Steve Husband, and Kelvin Shade Wing. And thank I want to thank our advisors, Omegas, and our Theron, Barbara and Scott, and Tommy Kaz, Mike G, Empty Drummer 7, Kohaku, Pebble. Oh, I missed it. Yeah. You know it, Abstraction and Super Death Dude. Chicago Lovelessy Monsters. Got oh, we got DSNG Joe. Frosty. Oh, oh, he's not in there yet. <laughs> Ben's got to fix that because it just happened. <laughs> we got all our chairlings. Oh, uh, it's going by, by too quickly. I can't name them all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of Ulytics flavored week. We'll yes. see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Love you all. <laughs> <laughs>